The goal of this season is to make sure that there's a foundation set for the rest of this podcast. We can have all the interesting convos we want, but if we don't talk about salvation, then what are we really talking about? You may already know what it is, but I believe this episode will provide different perspectives, deeper insight, and practical ways to explain salvation to those that don't yet believe. So I got some friends with me to discuss the ins and outs, so let's jump into it. From my right to, to my left, let's go around. Just introduce yourself real quick. Uh, my name is Tari. Um, I'm Antonio. And I'm Real. Cool. So, have y'all always had an accurate understanding of what salvation is? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about it. I haven't either. Um, I know for me, before I received Christ, I didn't, I talk about this all the time, I didn't understand the character of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like, I knew there was God. I knew there was heaven and hell. This as a child, Mm -hmm. I didn't know that being good, quote unquote, or doing good was not enough to get me to there. Mm -hmm. And so I had this idea that if I, like, if I embodied like goodness here on earth, Mm -hmm. then that was enough for me to have eternal life in heaven and not go to hell. I would emphasize that even more. Like mm-hmm. it became mm-hmm. less about eternal life in heaven and more about, oh my gosh. Don't go. I just you don't want to go, go to hell. hell. Right, I can't right. go there. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. So yeah. it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why my dad always say whenever it be hot outside, Man. like, oh, I, I can't make it. This. Look, I can't hell, hell too hot, but ever too long. <laughs> <laughs> but ever too way too long. Listen. Yeah. Anybody else? Nah, I mean, I know for me growing up, kind of the same thing. Because my dad's a pastor, so in church, you know, the first thing, the biggest thing I've heard all the time was the righteous is scarcely make it in. Mm. And wow. a lot of a lot of old preachers say that, but they never add any context to like <laughs> right. what that means, right? <laughs> so you're sitting there like, dang, right. I could just be good and I barely make it in. Mm-hmm. And like, oh, I'm going to leave that. Like, I ain't going to touch nothing. Like, I'm just going to not do nothing wrong mm. um, with no real understanding of, like, what that actually means. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it was a, it was kind of convoluted because you're just sitting there, like, especially as a kid, then when you get older and you're, like, you're trying to understand, you're trying to figure out, okay, righteous is scarcely make it in. Like, mm-hmm. so does that mean morally righteous? Right. Does that mean, like, <laughs> what is righteousness? You know, right. what is righteousness, mm-hmm. you know? Right. Yeah. What, you know, what does that mean? I think, because even now I'm still trying to understand that. Yeah. You know, understand that more. So I can definitely relate with both. For me, it was do good mm-hmm. so you don't go to hell, you know? So you have salvation, but it would, for me, I operated out of actions. Mm-hmm. I operated out of if I don't do this, if I don't do that, then I'm, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be okay. And so, yeah, I basically, to, you know, piggyback off of that, but it was, I operated in works. Like, yeah, I just don't want to go to hell, so let me be a good person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, th- I think a lot of people had that um, misunderstanding of, like, goodness, actions, like, which we do need fruit, um, you know, of our salvation, but the work itself is not necessarily the it doesn't get us to heaven, right? Right. So let's talk about what salvation actually is. So now that we are in a more mature place spiritually, we you know, we got a better <laughs> understanding, how will we define salvation? Well, <laughs> um it's receiving the gift that Christ gives each and every one of us. Yeah. So freely. It's receiving Christ. It's understanding that we need a savior and that it's not by works that we are good enough to be with him and we could never do enough even on our best day and so if we're talking about you know becoming saved you know romans tells us we confess with our mouth that jesus is lord and he died on the cross and raised from the dead then we'll be saved Mm -hmm. and that's really what it is right um pretty simple but i think more than anything even when i understood that scripture because for yeah, a long time yeah. I hadn't confessed with my mouth like mm-hmm. I didn't because I didn't grow up in church but 
I came to understand that I needed a savior. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing with not receiving Christ is that a lot of people don't understand that you're dead in your sin because they don't see the immediate effects of sin. Yeah. And right. so you have to understand that Jesus, not only is he like a fictional, like he's not a fictional being, like, but apart from that, we need a savior. Yeah. yeah. And people can't see that sin is death. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the biggest part of salvation is that. You need to be saved. Right, like, right. like yeah. you, you need a savior. Yeah. <laughs> like something. If you don't get one, you're, you're not. You're, you're gonna die in your yeah. sin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard it said that um, not having a savior, or not accepting Jesus Christ as your savior, is the equivalent of being in an airplane ten thousand feet in the air, and you got a parachute on, but you think that. If you just flap your arms, you'll be saved, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Like you literally can't. We can't save ourselves, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And Jesus came to be that parachute. Now, yeah. again, even in that analogy, I thought it was interesting that it wasn't that we didn't have the parachute; is that we had it on, but we decided to flap our wings. Mm. We are not our wings. We don't got wings. <laughs> <laughs> our if arms, we did, right? Our arms. Um, so I think that implies that. We all have that. We all have Jesus as he's there. He's already done the work. Yeah. We already have the parachute, yeah. but will we pull it? Mm, we, you know what I'm saying? The parachute un- unused is, you might as well just not have Useless. one. Useless, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. What you got to say, bro? <laughs> no, just thinking about the analogy of pulling it, like, are you going to pull it? I looked up, you know, what, you know, salvation meant mm-hmm. and- the preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. Mm. And so thinking about, you know, like are are you gonna are you gonna grab it? Are you gonna pull it? Are you going to or are you gonna Yeah flap your arms? So I thought that was I thought that was pretty cool. I think in that analogy, um, which is I wanna say it's funny, but I think the part, the most scary part about that is like to have the parachute on, I know it's there. Yeah. Right? So you're flapping your arms only mm-hmm. because you don't realize that backpack is a parachute. Mm. Right? Yeah. So when you think about Jesus as a savior or salvation, um, you know, some people will say, well, if you have a person, you know, that grew up, right? Mm-hmm. For Not you, for instance, but somebody that didn't grow up in church mm-hmm. and had— I want to say they didn't have an opportunity to know Jesus, but that's just how they grew up. They may be morally right, like morally good. Mm-hmm. They may not do nothing, you know, mm-hmm. too terrible or too bad. Um, and then, you know, they die. Mm-hmm. And then one person will say, well, they're good. They were a good person. And this, that, and the third. And it's like, well, does that mean, like, you just lost? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. does that mean you, you can't come back from that? Um, yeah, I think, and I'm thinking of the scripture. It's it's just like the little excerpt when Jesus is saying, "I don't have sheep of this fold, mm-hmm. but I am the door for mm-hmm. you know those sheep yeah. to come in." Yeah, um, that's just that's what it made me think. I feel like I'm right. No, no, no. no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, no, nah, that makes perfect sense. It's it's like. You can't make it by righteousness. Mm-hmm. You can't make it by works. Because let's keep it a band. The the most righteous person on this planet right now is still short of the glory of God. Yes. You're still short right. of, of, of the righteousness that would actually permit you into heaven. If we could, if we could just get in on righteousness, right? right. right. You were we were born in sin. The Bible mm-hmm. says that we were born in sin, shaping mm-hmm. it in, in iniquity. The best person is already yeah. sin is in you when you come out the womb. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, thankful, thankfully, because of salvation, we are we are wiped clean. Mm-hmm. Um, we are made new. Mm-hmm. We become new creatures. But just naturally, nobody's good. Yeah. We all come into this earth mm-hmm. evil. That's it. Um, and I don't, when I say evil, I want to be clear because I know that sounds like well, I'm not evil. <laughs> <laughs> we have sin. We have sin, yeah. a sinful nature yeah. mm-hmm. um, at heart. At, at just from birth, um, as a result of Adam, the Bible says that when Adam sinned, sin came into the world. That's right. mm-hmm. um, and so, as a result of that, we have sin when we are born. Um, but thank, like, 
like God literally sent us a savior. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like instant. Yeah. Instantly. Yeah. I just I heard, I heard another story about I think it's great how people uh, make it make sense is that um you 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 commit a terrible crime, right? And yeah. you're in the courthouse and you're facing 25 to life. Right. And rightfully you did the crime, you you you're guilty, right? I mean, you're like, "Dang, I got to I just got to do this time." And then someone comes in and pleads to the judge, like, please to the judge, like, please let this person walk free. Right. I'll do whatever I need to do, but let them go. To not be saved will be the equivalent of saying, nah, don't do that. I'm gonna just do the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's wow. like it's literally what he it sent is. you, he sent you the way out, mm-hmm. but you just like, nah, yeah. I'll do it myself. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Um and then another perspective which blew my mind on who God was is that, because we always think like hell. Mm-hmm. We think hell is this terrible place that God sends us, yeah. right? It sends people, not us, sends people because he's angry at them for their sin. Mm-hmm. Hell is a place for people to go when they've decided to pay for their own sins. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm. when I heard that, I was like, What? He was saying Jesus paid for our sins, right. mm-hmm. but again, going back to the judge thing, if you don't accept what he's trying, he, if you don't accept him trying to get you out, mm-hmm. then it's like mm-hmm. you have to pay for your own. Yeah, because the wages of sin yeah. mm-hmm. is death. Mm-hmm. So we rightfully deserve death and, and, and hell. Mm-hmm. Like, let's be real. Yeah. Um. But thanks be to God and Jesus Christ that Hallelujah. literally came so that we don't have to do that. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think it's to that you have to think about. I heard the saying, God doesn't send you to hell. You send you you to hell. Mm. Like, if salvation is there and he gives you will, Mm -hmm. you know, he gives us free will of whatever decision or however, um, God will get your attention, but he's also gentle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, but that has to be, you know, we have to take some ownership (laughs) in that, like. (laughs) Do you think God, do you think that's God's heart for you to do, you know, to, like, he He weeps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He weeps. Like, so I heard that a while ago, like, he was like, God doesn't, you know, yeah, you, you made a decision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's unfortunately, though, the result of bad ideology, bad theology, unfortunately, ignorance, not in like a bad way, but just people just don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They don't understand that that's not God's heart. They don't understand that it's literally his will for everyone to come to the knowledge of Christ and have a relationship with him. That was always the end goal, mm-hmm. was relationship. That mm-hmm. was always what it was supposed to be. He wants all of us. But because you have certain people, and thanks be to God, because when I received Christ, like, I mean, I wasn't beat over the head with the Bible at all. Mm-hmm. I was just kind of floating. Like, yeah. I heard stuff <laughs> from my... My grandmother, you know, my mom, she who's getting baptized next month. Yeah. Um, but she, it was never like given to me. The gospel was never presented to me. I had an idea of God. I knew heaven, hell. Like, mm-hmm. but I didn't understand God's heart. Like, I didn't understand the heart of God. And a lot of people are ignorant to the heart of God. They don't yeah. understand that he's not this entity that's up here like mm-hmm. he's here mm-hmm. he like is this. personal yeah. mm-hmm. and relationship is the end goal not whether or not i just want you to choose me because like not for i mean god wants us but it's also for us that he wants us mm-hmm. yeah you know what i mean so i think it's just it's, it's it just comes back to people really not knowing they don't yeah. really understand god's heart they don't know that he doesn't send people to hell. They send themselves. Like, they don't understand that. And then the enemy has done a work, I feel, in the body and perverted terms that we need to understand salvation, yeah. like sin mm-hmm. and holiness. Mm-hmm. People don't like those terms because they start cringing like, oh, my gosh. But these are literally the terms. This is why Jesus came. But the enemy's perverted these things to where people run from it mm-hmm. yeah. instead of seek to understand it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. In in the sin episode, we talked about like how you said like it's re- it's relational. So in the sin episode, we were talking about like it's less about how can I not sin mm-hmm. or what sin you know. Mm-hmm. It's more about 
how can I be like Christ? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How can I be closer to God? You know, when, when you do those, inevitably, you sin less. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. you know God, you know that mm-hmm. you're saved. When you know, you know what I'm saying? When you've accepted Christ, you know, when you have that relationship, mm-hmm. a lot of the questions and like the, the things we worry about, it goes away because you're with him mm-hmm. and, you, and you're in communion with him. And so those questions aren't even a thing anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, it just it's just it's part of the relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to ask, how has your life changed after one being saved, but like even more so like understanding what salvation was? I know that's a <laughs> tough question. I I feel like I'm talking too much, so I wanna go with some else. Um well, wow, I'm thinking about it. I like anime, right? Uh-huh. So, um, any Dragon Ball Z fans? Let's go. Just call it shame <laughs> um, at some point, as a fighter, you know, you, you get stronger, you get more powerful. Um, and then you reach a level where your body mm-hmm. reacts to things on its own, right? Mm-hmm. So, it's called Ultra Instinct. Mm-hmm. And Thinking about that question, um, once you receive God, um, receive the Holy Spirit, you start doing things naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, that's good. Kind of on your own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's good. So things where you normally <laughs> would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, things where you normally would, you wouldn't have a, I would say pause, uh-huh. but you would kind of just have a reaction. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So somebody makes you mad mm-hmm. or triggers you. Mm-hmm. And before you would be like, oh yeah, we finna shoot the ones like <laughs> yeah. <it's on." laughs> and, but in this in this instance, you start thinking about what made them do that. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. You start thinking about, well, you're you're acting this way. How how can I handle this situation? Grace. Where there's no confusion, yeah. there's yeah. no animosity, there's no or even if you're not, even if that person isn't in that place, okay, you how you feel. Let's let's try to move past mm-hmm. it, or I'm gonna mm-hmm. remove myself. Mm-hmm. It's those things where our natural side isn't so quick to act, and mm-hmm. our spiritual side is reacting yeah. for us. Mm-hmm. Right, um, that's good. And I think that's like for me when I start realizing. And it, and it don't I would, I would say I realize, but you don't really realize it just happens. It's right. just a thing that just happened. And you find you find yourself in situations like, wow, I really didn't like mm-hmm. I didn't do nothing. I didn't yeah. pop off. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. thank you, Lord. Like, you know, yeah. we keep it moving, you know. And that's, yeah. that's that's how I kind of think of it. Repeat the question one more time. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, how how has your life changed after becoming saved and after understanding what salvation truly is? Well, um, how did my life change? Let me say, <laughs> my whole life changed. <laughs> my whole life changed, um, and I think that's the beauty of salvation. Like Jesus died on the cross for our sins; He sacrificed everything, every fiber in His body for us. So this is why Jesus wants to be a part of every mm-hmm. everything in our our life. Um, so salvation. For me, what, I, what I've come to find out, the more you mature in Christ. Now, you want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Mm-hmm. But what I've come to find out is I don't ponder mm. if I'm going to heaven or hell as much mm-hmm. as I did yeah. mm-hmm. in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, because I think there's levels to salvation yep. with being comfortable with being like, you're in this phase like, okay, I'm saved. <laughs> okay, I'm saved and I'm not going to hell. All right, mm-hmm. so what do we do next? And and as you grow in Christ, you're like, I know that I know that I know that I'm covered in the yeah. like in the, yeah. in the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I know that the enemy, and sometimes we have to realize sometimes the enemy, the enemy, <laughs> the enemy, <laughs> <laughs> the enemy will uh, try to attack you so much when when you are solid in your salvation yeah because he knows that you don't belong to hell right Mm. so Mm. that goes to 
they will try to do as much as they can on earth, knowing mm-hmm. that that is not your place, that is not your home. Mm-hmm. So I think there's levels. That's how it's changed my life, just being more comfortable and confident in my in my walk with Christ. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, like I agree, and I think levels. Just because I know some people are just with words, like every word is so. I would add levels in our understanding of salvation, Mm -hmm. or in our understanding of where we are in salvation, right? Mm -hmm. Because once, I mean, once you save, you save. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. It's no nobody's more saved than you, Mm -hmm. right? The person who's been saved for eighty years is not more saved than the person that just got saved at listening to this podcast, right? Mm Right. But the person that's been saved 80 years might have a, a more mature understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, like that's you good. said, uh, they, they might question their faith less because they know, they have an understanding. Again, if we go on relational, mm-hmm. think about um, somebody you just met mm-hmm. today versus somebody you've known for 10 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I take somebody I just met today and they put uh, a period at the end of the sentence as opposed to an exclamation mark, I might think they wasn't excited. Mm-hmm. They they might not have meant that though. That yeah. might just be how yeah. they text. They might just be a boring texter. They don't use yeah. exclamation right. marks. Yeah. When I know that person for ten years, I know exactly that period. Don't mean that they yeah. they being dry. They just that's how they text. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so the same thing is again. It's still a, I'm still in a relationship with that person, but my understanding of it is totally different. Right. Mm-hmm. My understanding of the person is totally different. And so the same with Christ. When we when we first become saved, if I'm being real. I didn't know what that meant. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't know what that meant. I don't. I I, I said the prayer at church. <laughs> was that like I a little youth up, conference? Like, right, 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 right. I'm not put my hand it. up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going there. Yeah. Um, I put my hand up at the conference, and I was like, "Okay, is that cool? Yeah. Like, enjoy yeah, the rest." What? And I like, I didn't know. Yeah. So to be real. Was I even saved then? Because I didn't know what what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I don't even know. I, I can't remember the moment. It was literally I was young, yeah. so I don't even remember if if I just said the prayer or if I actually confessed with my mouth and believed in my heart that Jesus Christ. I didn't even understand what that meant. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. It didn't make sense that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. It made sense that this is a emotional moment yeah. and they asked yeah. if I should pray this prayer and I prayed it and I put my hand up to say that I prayed it and so I guess I'm saved now Yeah, mm-hmm. but I hope that I'm I hope that if I die today that I go to yeah. heaven <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm like I, I hope that if I die today so before we keep going like bottom line if you don't hear nothing else Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. Amen. Yes. Amen. You cannot save yourself. Amen. You cannot be good enough to be saved. Mm-mm. You cannot do enough good. I don't care if you give all your money away. You volunteer with the homeless every weekend. Yeah. There's no amount of good that can get you into to, to heaven. You are just a, again, you're a person jumping out of a plane with a parachute on and you're not deciding to pull it. Amen. Amen. So with this episode, I'm going to tell you one scripture, two scriptures. One, John 3, 16. Mm-hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Yeah. We say it so often that sometimes it's diluted in mm-hmm. power, mm-hmm. but whoever believes in him. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying to you is that if you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, that's we just have to believe that one, and, and if we're being real, you don't need to be super spiritual to believe that. Right. Mm-hmm. If we're right. even being real, because I know a lot of people are super logical, mm-hmm. go through history. Yeah. There are scientists, there, there are atheist scientists that will tell you that Jesus died on the cross. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. They don't choose to accept him as their savior. But they will tell but they you, know, we, we have, have the data for this happening. Right. So I, I wouldn't want your, your your relationship with Christ to just be strictly logical. But for some people, I think that is what it would take for them to know Absolutely. that mm-hmm. he actually did do this. We really do have proof that he mm-hmm. did die. Mm-hmm. And we do have, you know what I'm saying? We do yeah. have historical data of people, uh, of their uh, testimony of him coming back. Right. Yeah. right. Him being there. Mm-hmm. So uh, if that's what Ooh. it takes, we we can go there. I, right. <laughs> we can go there. 
And then, <laughs> but let's be like, you have to believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then Romans 10, 9. If you, if, if you don't do anything else, memorize these two scriptures. John mm-hmm. 3, 16, Romans 10, 9. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, again, it's a, the belief right. that he, you know, it's belief in Jesus. Mm-hmm. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you will believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Like you said, Tari, you you, you think at the beginning, you don't even know if you confessed, mm-hmm. right? Um, which is understandable. It's that part of like, I, I don't know if I did. I can't remember. Like, <laughs> I thought I believed, but it's like, it's that confession of, Jesus, I believe that you died yeah. and God rose you from the dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm saved. It's nothing more than that. It's no amount of, no, it's, yeah. I'm, I know I'm going on a ramp, no, but it's, it's like, yeah. it's that simple. You going to heaven or hell is that simple. You yeah. and Once you do that, you don't have to question it. You don't mm-hmm. have to wonder. There's no amount of doing crazy stuff. Like, of course, don't, the Bible says don't, you know, don't take advantage of, of our, of the grace that we've been given, but you're saved. Mm-hmm. Right. And you can rest knowing that if I die right now, I will be with him. Mm-hmm. You were gonna say something, sorry. I don't. I don't know if I want to go here, but um, <laughs> I think that as y'all are talking, one of the biggest things that's coming up for me is actually believing, like yep. not mm-hmm. just yep. believing in Christ, but knowing that He has accounted for how much you can believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, You're like that's accounted for. If you look in the Bible, there are several moments when there is like an account for how little faith. Mm-hmm. He knows we have. Yeah. Like it's not on this hierarchy categorical type of he doesn't look at it that way because mm-hmm. the word says he knew us before he formed us in our mother's womb which means that he knows the entire plan for our lives and the trajectory of it yeah. mm-hmm. including the moment that he is right there and you're about to receive him and everything that's up against you receiving him. Yeah. So all the logic, all the Spiritual backing of like if you if you're involved in another belief system, mm-hmm. he accounts for that stuff. He's not looking for that person in that moment right. to immediately have this mind blowing like, well, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and I feel like sometimes we, especially people that do wrestle with you know intellectualism or logic, it's actually believing that when you give him what you have in your heart, it's enough. Yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is enough Ooh. because he knows it's there. He knows <laughs> yeah. exactly where you are. He's accounted for it already. Yeah. But what the enemy will try to do is sow a seed of confusion mm-hmm. for people yeah. that think that even in that, there's works to be performed to yeah. actually prove to God mm. that they believe enough. Right. Yes. And it's a tactic. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's a tactic. When you accept Jesus and everything, because he always has better for you. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, well, I kind of, I, you know, I believe in Jesus. You know, I don't, I don't want to miss that. I want to go to heaven, but I still want to live my life however I want to live it. Mm-hmm. You know, and we have grace and we have mercy, mm-hmm. but I think that's where the salvation part gets misconstrued. Because I wonder, instead of first introducing salvation, I wonder if we focused on relationship, yep. yeah, Would it yep. be and then introduce sal- uh, mm-hmm. salvation, yep. because. That that may be the the fuse that's not clicking, clicking, clicking right? yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Absolutely. that too, so the relationship part, and it goes back to what we said in the beginning, a lot of people just really don't understand that we have relationship with God through Jesus. Mm-hmm. And they don't understand that Jesus was fully human, so mm-hmm. can empathize with us, and that's Bible, but didn't cease to be God. They don't. They really think that God is this entity that's up here, mm-hmm. and that it's not a relational thing. And so, I mean, even in the Bible, I think it's in Mark where the man brought his son because I think he was having seizures. I'm, seizure. I'm literally here. And, the demon. I, can okay. I, can I read it? Go ahead. I, yeah. Because I literally pulled it up, and I was thank you, Tari. <laughs> we, we here, and I because because I was going to say you talked about the little faith, mm-hmm. and because I, I think this is the recorded in the Bible the the least amount of faith of someone like talking to Jesus, right? Yeah. Um, a man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought my son who was possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. Mm. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Mm-hmm. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him 
So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Like, he knows. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No. Tired. Yeah. that. I mean, honestly, I put my last dollar that a lot of people that don't know or that are not saved, they don't understand that that's a part of the attributes of Jesus, mm-hmm. that he understands Yep. exactly where you are like it's literally documented mm-hmm. that you can go to God and say I believe but help my unbelief yeah, right. I, like, I, I believe in you enough that I know you got there's something you can do for me mm-hmm. but I still don't fully know and you can take I that still, to him yeah, mm-hmm. yeah a lot of people don't understand that I think when you it's, that's big when you <laughs> go back to what you said in the beginning holiness and sin mm-hmm. right and then you understand the lifestyle and the salvation mm-hmm. and how you can confess Jesus is Lord. Yeah. And you run into helping me overcome my unbelief. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you look at it, that's one big thing, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Because your relationship, when you understand, like you said, he does understand you may not. As long as you have the faith of a mustard seed, mm-hmm. like I, I, I got you. Mm-hmm. And I think why people miss that relationship part is because whenever holiness is explained, mm. it, it's it's explained as a specific lifestyle. Yeah, and oh, because on, salvation yeah. isn't isn't uh shoot, I had it and I lost it. But works. but because it's a specific lifestyle, right? And salvation becomes work. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest: if it was easy, everybody would do it. Mm-hmm. Right. And because it's hard, it's work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just tap into the natural part of it. Those things in that relationship, a lot of people aren't able to understand mm. that. As long as you apply the faith. Mm-hmm. Everything else mm-hmm. will come with it. Mm-hmm. So when you when you apply the belief, you enter the relationship, and then you enter your lifestyle right. because of your belief. Yeah. Then the salvation and the work becomes a part, and it just right. marries itself yeah. into this believer. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a believer of Jesus Christ. Okay. Now you have all of these things. Now you're having a relationship with God. God, we here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I may not know how I'm gonna get through this right now, right. but I know you here. Right. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just trust in you. Yeah. I don't have the I don't have a huge faith right now. I don't have that that huge big faith, but I got right now faith. Right. So I'm gonna just see. you know what I'm saying. I'm gonna yeah. just I ain't got it, but I'm gonna go with it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It, it just when you when you said that, it made me go back to the holiness and the sin yeah. mm-hmm. and the the lifestyle and the salvation. Yeah. Because when we look at sin. In a minute, you could have a pencil on the ground, and I picked it up. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like salvation's like right. that insurance policy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like <laughs> it, that's yeah. yeah. And I just feel like very led right now, like whoever's listening to this, to know that you believe enough to to know Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I know for me, when I, I I really was like, it was like bondage because I was like. I don't think I'm there. Like I is literally, it was literally, and, and I mean, it was a sister in Christ that told me about Mark, mm-hmm. about how you can literally, it's in the Bible that you can ask him to help you with your unbelief. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that that keeps people from pursuing relationship with Jesus because in order to actually receive all that he came for, yeah, even re- like relationally, mm-hmm. because any relationship, there has to be an investment yep. yeah. on yeah. both ends. Absolutely. And people don't understand that part either, yeah. that he didn't just come for us to, to to save us so that we could have eternal life with him. He came for that, but it was always about having intimate relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I feel like what keeps people mm-hmm. from having that intimate relationship with Jesus is thinking that 
they don't believe enough to have it, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, well, there's a still part of me. I have my questions. You can take that to God. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. and a lot of people feel like they, they can't. So, yeah. Yeah. We talked about that in, in the Sin episode, which I believe is coming out after this one. But we talked about how, um, you ever been like really out of shape and you say, Jesus. I'm not even. I'm not even. I, this, no, no, no. I, I've been. Look, I'm talking about. Look, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this. I let me make it personal. Very personal. There you go. I have this time where I've been super out of shape, right? Mm-hmm. And some some of my homies asked me to go play basketball, and I'm like, I need to go. I need to start going to the gym first now, now, <laughs> so that I can be in shape enough to go play basketball. Same. Yeah. When Same. in reality, if I would just go to the to to go play with them. I would be Fine. winded, but I would start to get stronger right. and more. Yeah, yeah. It's the same way of like you thinking that I have to get a certain amount of strength up mm. before I can even get saved. It's yeah. like, no, you don't you don't get saved. Like I use this, I use this and that. I'm gonna use it again. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to hear it again. <laughs> you don't go to the hospital after you're healed. You That's don't good, go Kevin. to a doctor. Mm. After you're healed, right. you go when you're sick. You yeah. go when you're broken. That's you go when you're true. injured. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make it doesn't make sense for me to say oh, I'm a little bit too embarrassed to go to the hospital now because I got these injuries and yeah. then like see <laughs> my leg about to fall off. So I'm gonna yeah. wait until I get my leg healed enough, just enough, so that yeah. then mm-hmm. they can treat me and they can see me. It doesn't make any sense. Right. Mm-hmm. The hospital is there so that they can fix you from whatever brokenness you're in. Mm-hmm. And so in the same way. Salvation, it don't matter where you at. It right. don't matter. I don't care if you was... First of all, let's keep it a band. If you're listening to this episode, you're not that far. Right. But the fact that you... You are here. We're 30 in something minutes into this yeah. episode talking about salvation and you still listening, there's yeah. a part of you that wants to... You're Come seeking. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. You're seeking God, right? right. You're, yeah. you're seeking salvation if you made it this far. You're not Ooh. just going to stumble upon it. Right. You, 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 didn't just ha- you didn't just get here. Yeah. It's this divine encounter that you're here right now. Mm-hmm. But the other thing is just that you don't have to be there to get saved. Can right. I say the scripture? Yeah. Mark 2, 17. This is NIV. On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not healthy. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Mm. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that just, that's Bible. <laughs> that's Bible. <laughs> See, I didn't even have that scripture for it. Uh, that's, because that's, that's a lot of that. people it, yeah, yeah. think, and I've heard this so, I mean, even... It's not people in my family that think that you have to get to a place first to receive Christ when no. it's the total opposite. opposite. Yep. Literally, this came from G- Jesus said this himself. Yeah. That he came for the sick, the sinners. Like you, yep. you don't have to work your way to receive Christ. You don't have to work your way to receive Christ. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. He like he, you're not a lot of people feel like I ain't ready yet. Because here's the thing. You can die right, right now. now. God yep. forbid. You yeah. can die right now, and it don't matter that you was waiting to get. Yep. You didn't get. You didn't get what you need. You, you didn't, didn't get, get it. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think. Oh, I think the, and I think the reason why. Oh, that was making noise. I think the reason why it's like that because with anything, again, like you said, you think God is so here, mm-hmm. right? Uh, uh, yeah. Up, so just up in yeah. the cloud. Just up in the yeah. yeah. He up here. Past space and I can't get to him. <laughs> old old and, Testament guy. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Look. And then Je- they got or, Jesus. But Jesus is, you know, he was perfect in all his ways, and I gotta get to a starting point. Yeah. I gotta get to a starting point <laughs> in order to mm-hmm. interact or look to Jesus. Mm-hmm. When you like you said, you literally just have to start. Mm-hmm. And it's so it's so funny how I wanna I want to take it away from the spiritual, but how natural our minds think, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what prime example, if you want to work out, mm-hmm. you know, right? I want to run. Okay. I can't just go. I got to set up a plan. Right, right, right. I got to get my food together. Mm-hmm, right. I got to uh, get some clothes first. <laughs> right, right, right. And all you got to do is it go just, outside and take a walk. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. how you start. And that's how you start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. unless, and I don't want to take it here, but unless you have people that understand, which is why I'm understanding community, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you have people that like 
understand or have the, I want to say skill, but have that skill. Mm-hmm. So it's like, come on. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, how That's you doing? What, yeah. Like, I'm going to check yeah. on you today and let's mm-hmm. go do something. Or yeah. I'm going to show you guys light through this situation. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So when you just, it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm sharing this story with you. I've been to my yeah. lowest point and I look for God and he was there. Yeah. Right. And I ain't have nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? I ain't had no big major call, speaking in tongues right. and doing yeah. all this stuff. I just said, God, help me. Right. Yeah. And that was the start. Right. Yeah. And I think until you go back to relationship, mm-hmm. hey, you know what I'm saying? And so you just just start. I think yeah. that nobody just understands. Just start. Start, yeah. yeah, and last thing, and I'm done, y'all. I promise, because <laughs> I, 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 I'm there. I'm we there all, now. Got, I'm there now. So much. I think the worst thing, and by worst, I mean the most. The thing that, looking back and now with understanding the heart of God that I've heard is when people have said, "I got to get myself together first. Mm, yeah. yeah, I've literally heard someone say that. I, I got to get myself together first, and I think that. It just makes me think about what you said, real. Like, I really wonder what it would look like if we presented the gospel. I mean, the gospel is good. I mean, it's all good mm-hmm. by itself. We don't need to add nothing. <laughs> but just the posture mm-hmm. that it's Jesus desires relationship. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that we do our best as those that truly understand the heart of God and have a relationship with him to convey it in a way that's not like, if you don't do this right now, you're going to hell. Right. And there's the reality in that, that there are going to be some lost souls. Yeah. And we can't take away from that. Like, that's there's that's a right. reality that we are not there's supposed to yeah. buffer. We're not supposed to water down. But at the same time, that's not all that Jesus has for us. Right. Mm. That's, I mean, that's huge, obviously. But there are benefits for us to outlive here on earth. Yeah. yeah. Like, I didn't get a chance to answer your question about um, how my life changed and there's just such an abundance in my life yeah. with Jesus. And by abundance, I don't mean tangible stuff I can touch, but in my heart, in my mind, yeah. like in my soul, that you will never know until you experience it for yourself. Right. And yeah. I've always said that I believe that God, sometimes we are limited in how we can describe our experiences with God because it's how he preserves our intimacy with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Like there are just some experiences mm. I've had with Jesus. I literally cannot tell you what it's like. But I believe that that's how he preserves intimacy with people, each and every one individually. No. Wow. No, that's <laughs> so it made me think about. Um, so you guys ever wonder, like, basically, I don't know. I feel like Holy Spirit just like, man, I wonder if we just kind of like change the narrative mm. of introducing relationship because so much before just shoving salvation. Mm -hmm. Because it's like when we have a soul in front of us, a a daughter or a son of God, the end motive is, I want you to be saved. You know what I mean? And and I think just going back is, for one, this is the realest under under the title religion out here, Mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter where you are or who you are. Mm It doesn't matter. It it just doesn't matter. And it breaks my heart sometimes that people think that you have to get yourself together before coming to Jesus. When that's why he came. When that's that's (laughs) why he came. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you don't have to stop thinking that. And so the reason why um, you ever— Oh, sorry. Take your time. It's just, you. Just, it's just, you know what Holy Spirit hit? You just don't <laughs> yeah. want to the words. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you wonder why baptism, why people, it's so special. Mm-hmm. Think about that. Mm-hmm. When you get baptized, sometimes people take a month or two, three months, or they wait a year later mm-hmm. to get baptized. And when they come up out of that water, mm-hmm. they are overjoyed. Mm -hmm. There's tears. Mm -hmm. There is, uh, it's a, it's a big deal. You know what I'm saying? You have the people that you love there, but why is that moment so special? Mm -hmm. It's because over that time, the relationship was built. Mm -hmm. So instead of when you see someone just giving them automatic salvation, if in John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world, 
if how can you love somebody you don't have a relationship with? Mm. Mm. Even if it's intimate or daily or not, he had to have a relationship with us that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe. So if we just introduce the relationship, yeah. Yeah. if we just introduce who he is and let that relationship simmer and build, mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about Oh God, I missed my moment to 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 save them, you know. Because first of all, we can't save anyone; we're just used as a vessel. So God's going to find you exactly where you are. Right. Yeah, he's going to use so anybody. He's going to yeah, use yeah, anybody. Yeah. He's so using, yeah. take off that pressure of, oh, did I miss the moment? Because God will use whoever. But I just thought about just thinking about baptism. Why it's so special? Mm-hmm. It's because you sat in that relationship a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. That is simple. Amen. <laughs> that is simple. Simple. <laughs> now that's good. good. 